Our mission is really to run your internet marketing so that you can run your business. We realize that it's really hard to keep track of what's going on in social media. It changes almost every day. And you as a business owner only have so much time. So we really work with our clients to develop web presences that help them to engage new prospects, create leads, and drive traffic. We offer a variety of services, including content marketing, so blog posts, Facebook updates, custom web design, and social media marketing, including social campaigns. So what's the big deal about Facebook these days, right? I'm sure you know that Facebook is the king of social networks right now. They've got over a billion monthly active users and a few key benefits for small and medium businesses, any business really, is that it can be a very low-cost marketing channel. It's a great way to increase your brand awareness, connect with existing customers and new prospects, drive traffic back to your website, and offer deals and provide customer support. Since more and more, customers are turning to social media for feedback, criticism, and praise for your company. You really want to be there to meet them where they are online. And my first step to creating a compelling Facebook page is to really lay a strong foundation. More and more, Facebook is shifting to a very visual, photo-heavy platform. So you really want to be able to use attractive graphics and clear copy for your page. That includes a great cover image right at the top that's kind of like the the welcome mat to your Facebook page, and you want to make a great first impression. You also want to have really clear copy to make it really easy for your fans to figure out more about who you are and what you do and what you can do for them. And one of the key tips for a great Facebook page is to really focus on your audience. Be really aware of who you're trying to reach. What are their interests? What are their age ranges? Where do they live? What do they do for fun? You really want to be able to create content that really ties in to what your fans are interested in hearing about. And then focus on the what's in it for me factor. People want to like your page to get something. So they want something of value, whether it's great content, whether it's the inside scoop on local events, or promotions and deals. You really want to be aware of what you're offering fans as an incentive to like your page and stay connected. And they'll make it really easy for people to find you. Facebook has a lot of great features, so you can add information about other websites. You can add your company's phone number. If you are a brick and mortar business, it's really important to have your hours of operation and your address so your fans can find you offline as well. And then keep it fresh. It's really critical to keep your Facebook page updated on a regular basis, and I'll share a bit more about that in a moment. Here's an example of one of our clients' Facebook pages. So we work with them to really customize this page. And this company is Cottage and Bungalow. They're an online retailer dedicated to bringing you exclusively curated furniture, textiles, lighting, and accessories. And they really highlight a, a beach lifestyle and really want their fans to have beach houses to be able to decorate it, but also anyone to really bring that beach lifestyle and that beach decorating to their home wherever they live. So this Facebook page really reflects that company mission and that company brand. It also reflects the design of their website. So we've customized this page so that fans have a really consistent experience, whether they're visiting hydrogenbungalow.com or hydrogenbungalow on Facebook. And a few key things to notice here is that we've got this custom cover. We've also got a custom profile image. And at the bottom, these three custom tags. Join us on Pinterest, Lookbook, and CNB blog. So these custom tags are a great way to really provide a unique experience for your fans while also pointing people to other resources. So we've got a link back to the Cottage and Bungalow Pinterest page that got some really great content there. The Lookbook highlights products. And the blog pulls in content from the blog with more information about home decor and featured products. And then we've also, in this about section, got a little blurb about the company, as well as linked back to the website. So again, the goal here is really to make it easy to find 
Hives and Bungalow, those on Facebook, and on other platforms. Another example of a current client's page is from Real Kids Shade. And this is the world's leading innovator of premium quality, 100% UV protective eyewear for infants and children from ages 0 to 12. And the shades are comfortable, durable, and good looking, and they're really designed just for kids' faces and their lifestyles. So for this, the custom cover really features different children, different lifestyles, who are doing different activities in the shades. We've also, again, got an about section with the board of the company and the link back to their site, and then a few custom tabs to showcase products and testimonials, as well as a recent giveaway we're doing. So Facebook will highlight these four custom tabs. The first one is always going to be your photos. So you've got three if you want to use custom tabs for your own page that you can customize. And then you can have up to 12, but only these top four will be shown right away. So what are some action items for you to lay a really strong foundation for your Facebook page? The first is really a question of a Facebook profile versus a Facebook page. A lot of businesses who launched a Facebook presence a few years ago actually still have personal profiles for their businesses. So if you're in that boat, the first step for you, do not press go, do not <laughs> stop and select 200. You want to go straight to Facebook and convert your profile to a page. It's actually against Facebook's terms to be using a personal profile as a business. And one of the key benefits you get from using a page is that you can have an unlimited number of fans, and you've also got more options for customizing your page and seeing analytics on how your content's going and who your fans are. So if you're still using a Facebook profile, go straight back to Facebook and convert it to a page. Once you've got your page up and running, you want to fill out all of your business information completely. So that would be links back to your website or your blog or other social networks if you're on Twitter or Pinterest, for example. That might be your company email address or phone number. And again, if you have a brick and mortar location, that includes your address and your hours. And another key thing here are a lot of clients who are using Facebook and haven't quite gotten the groove don't really understand why Facebook is still driving traffic back to their website. One of the key tricks for that is to make sure that you include links back to your website and at least some of your updates. And that's especially true if you've got a blog and you can provide a stream of new content for fans to check out back on your site. You want to use great photos, so that includes your cover, that includes any pictures or albums, because Facebook is becoming more and more photo heavy, so you really want to have a page that looks great for viewers that are seeing it on their computers or on their mobile devices. And then custom tabs are a really great way to really change the whole look and feel of your page while providing great information and value for your fans. And that is a service that we work with our clients to develop and design those custom pages. Two more tips here are consider adding business milestones. Last year, Facebook rolled out a feature that allows you to go back in time and add milestones to your business. So you might add a milestone to highlight when your business launched, or a special anniversary, or a special award that you received. And that's a great way to let fans know more about the history of the company. And then two other things, new features, are the highlight, which lets you expand an image or an album to fit across the whole Facebook page screen. And that's a really great way to showcase information, especially if it's photos. And then the pin feature allows you to pin content to the top of your page for about a week. So instead of your important updates getting pushed down by newer content, you can have it featured at the top of the page. And one example of that is this webinar that you're on right now. On our digital show the Facebook page, we pin the update about this webinar to the top of our page so that anybody who came to the site would be sure to see that. The next step is community. Communication is really key on Facebook. So one question you might want to ask yourself is, is your Facebook page a social media ghost town? And I'm sure that many of you have seen them online. It's those Facebook pages, those Twitter accounts, those blogs that have not been updated since June of 2012. You know, there's no new content. 
And that is, that really doesn't work for Facebook. For social media, it's really all about the conversation, the content, the community. In traditional advertising, of course, you could have your ads, you could have your radio spot, and that would be that. But on Facebook, you really got to keep the communication with your fans to attract your fans and keep them engaged. Because communication really is key. It's all about keeping your fans in the loop about what's going on and sharing information that is really relevant to them and their interests. A few key tips for that. One is to share your stuff. You really want to be showcasing your products and services on Facebook. And remember that you've really got to tie up to what your fans are interested in. So it's not just about the product or service, it's about the lifestyle. People are more interested in the benefits than they're interested in the features. And it's really important to go for the soft sell. You don't want to take a used salesman, a used car salesman approach to Facebook marketing where you're all about buy, 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 got a promotion, buy, buy, buy. It's really important to create a conversation that highlights the benefits of your product, how that fits into your customer's lifestyle, and keep that conversation going before you ask for the sale. So here's an example of a recent post we did for Real Kids Shave. And it's, you know, a great picture of a kid in the Real Kids Shave. And kid is in our name. Find out what makes our shave perfect for your children. It's a link back to the site. So it's not just about the product, but it's about you've got kids, these are perfect for them. Find out more about why that is here. Another key tip is provide a sneak peek into your business. One great way to do that is to leverage photos. Celebrate the accomplishments. If you have a special event or you've won an award or are releasing a new product line, share that out with your fans. Any company news or behind-the-scenes updates are a great way to let your fans know more about who you are as a business. Because we do business with people and companies that we know, like, and trust. So this kind of behind-the-scenes information really helps your customers get to like you and get to know you. They'll trust you and then buy from you. And here's an example of a recent post from Cottage and Bungalow. They were just had a product featured in the blog in the UK. So we shared a photo of the blog with a link, a photo of the bank with a link back to the website. So again, find ways that you can share information about your business with those fans to keep them engaged. So the action items here for you will really communicate consistently. Aim for at least three updates a week. If you're really busy, and I completely understand that as a marketer, as a business owner, it's really hard to always find time for Facebook. So if you get really busy, schedule your updates in advance. Facebook rolled out a scheduling feature last year, and it's been great for marketers who want to be able to stay consistent, even if they may not always have time every day. And if you get right as block and you have really a hard time thinking of what to post, think of planning content feeds that will tie into your offering and also your customer interest. So, for example, if you're a wine retailer, maybe Monday is a wine tip of the week. Maybe Wednesday is a great wine accessory. And maybe Friday you share information about great local events that local wine lovers might be interested in. So think of different buckets of content that you can consistently share information about. And then another way to streamline this whole process for small businesses is to look for ways to recycle content. You may already have a newsletter that you share tips in. So find ways to reuse content in the newsletter on your Facebook marketing. You may already have a great event going on in your store. So take pictures of the event and share it on Facebook. This way, you can have one event or one piece of content and leverage it for multiple platforms, both online and offline. And you also want to find ways to curate content from other sources. It takes a lot of time and energy to really create all of your own original content. So one great way to get content without building yourself from scratch is to find the blogs or the websites that have similar themes and share their content. One example is on Real Kids Shave, we share a lot of content 
from bloggers who post reviews of real estate based products. So we're not writing that product, but we're showcasing our community while also creating, sharing more content with the real kid shades fans. And then once you've got your foundation for the page set up and you're communicating consistently, you want to pick it up a notch and find ways to really delight and captivate your audience. So the key question here is, is your Facebook page really yes? Or is it going to be not? Do you want to be really interesting and fun and engaging in whatever way that works for your business and your customers? So one great way to do this is to stay savvy about what's happening in your community and around the world. You really want to look for ways to share content that is timely and relevant. Social media is really an online water cooler. So there are always these events that people are talking about, whether it's holiday, a pop culture phenomenon like the Super Bowl, local news or events, or even national news and events. You want to keep an eye out for what's happening in your community, in the world, to find ways to tie your content, your product, your Facebook page into that larger conversation. And here's an example from the Cottage of Bungalow page. Easter was pretty recently, so we showed this picture from a interior design blog called Apartment Therapy and said, life it should be died, eggs is here. So it ties into the conversation around the holiday. We're also tying in the Cottage and Bungalow's fan interest in design and decor. A few more great examples of that. We also, a few months ago, had the Oscars come up and shared a Cottage and Bungalow picture of Oscar ready accessories. Or Valentine's Day, we created a whole album of Valentine's gifts for her. So think of ways that you can tie your business into the conversation. Maybe you are a flower shop and you can share information, a photo album on Mother's Day about the top Mother's Day bouquets. Maybe you are a wine shop and you can share information on wine gifts for college grads or champagne which celebrate graduation season <laughs> with people who are 21 and up, of course. So really find ways to tie your content into what people are already talking about and thinking about. Another tip is to ask a lot of questions. You really want to get your fans liking, commenting, sharing, because the more your fans are involved with your page, the more their friends want you to see that they're kind of getting involved and check you out. So that's really the key to getting your page to spread virally through Facebook. A few ways to do this is to ask simple questions. So this is another example of cottage and bungalow. Don't you think food just tastes better when it's on a beautiful plate? So a simple yes question. We got a few great likes and a yes. And look for ways you can do that with your business. Another two tips for this, a lot of captions, but I'm using a lot of captioning across the internet. So maybe it's a great photo or a funny photo of your business. Maybe you're a pet store and you share a funny cat photo with a caption this. Or fill in the blank posts are also a lot of fun. And the big tip here is to keep it simple, sweetheart. Share really simple, short questions that are really easy for fans to answer, either with a yes or a no, or with a very short question, short answer. For example, if you sell movies, maybe what's your favorite movie of all time might be a lot for fans to think about if their movie sucks. Maybe what's your favorite Sylvester so Stallone movie <laughs> is an easier one to answer. So think of questions that are going to be really easy for your fans to get involved with. And this is a tip to use sparingly, mm -hmm. is to ask for action. If some of your posts, you really want to give your fans a clear idea of what to do with their content by providing a call to action. Maybe it's to click here, check this out, visit us now. If you saw updates about this webinar on Facebook, you probably saw encouragement to register now before all the spots fill up. And those are all calls to action. We're encouraging you to do something, whether it's a like or a register. And it's also a great idea to, from time to time, really ask for fans to like or share content to get them engaged. In this example from Your Kids Chase, 
like Nelly, that that will be blessed after our giveaway. Please like or share to help us spread the word. So we're asking our fans to do something for us, but also giving them this great opportunity to win a fun prize. And it gets used up sparingly. You don't want to have every single post be uh, like this or share this, but you do want to use some time to time to get your fans engaged. Another great example is you sell gifts or have any connection to a Mother's Day gift giving or celebrating. Maybe if Mother's Day is coming up, put like that you love your mom. So easy answer, a lot of like potential. Or if it's Fourth of July weekend, maybe share a picture of fireworks and click like if you'll be seeing fireworks today. So find ways to get your fans involved by asking them for an action, whether it's a like or ask them to register for webinar. And the secret idea here really is that if you can get your fans to take small actions like liking your page or commenting, it makes it easier down the line to encourage them to stop by your store, buy something. You really want to get them used to taking action with you. And a few pro tips. One is tag other pages. If you have a post that includes another local business or a magazine, Tag that page in your post so it will show up on their page and may be seen by that audience. Another typically jazz up your updates. Try to avoid making links, photos, or videos. And what I mean by that is just a plain photo, or video, or link with no other context. People are more or less to click on something and engage if they know what they're clicking on. So if you're ever sharing a link or a photo or a video, share a little bit of information give them context. And it's possible to include a link as well to drive them back to other content or back to your website. I found a combination of multimedia with the text and the link can be a really powerful way to get attention on Facebook and stand out. Another major key is to have a really consistent brand voice. It's really important to think of what is the experience that you're business provides and how does that sound to your customers? Is it fun? Is it funny? Is it sophisticated? Are you more casual or are you very professional? So you want to identify what that brand voice is, how you want to come across your fans, and make sure that all of your content is aligned with that same voice. It's really important that your fans know what to expect when they check out your page because that makes them want to engage more and remain long-term fans. And a few action items for you when it comes to captivating your fans. The first one is experiment with different types of content. Try that combination of text and multimedia and see how your fans respond. Try questions and polls. You can either do a text update with a question or use Facebook poll feature if you want fans to choose from a certain number of things. And then experiment with those captions and filling in the blank. And try different types of questions and different calls to action to see how your fans respond. And when they respond well, keep doing what you're doing well. And just tweak and adjust so you can keep growing and getting better and better on Facebook. And then the next key tip is to really plan content around those major holidays, pop culture moments, and events. Plan in advance what's coming up and how you can tie into it, whether it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, graduation, Fourth of July. Think about how you can join the conversation through your business on Facebook. And the more advanced planning you do, the easier it will be to maintain that consistent presence on Facebook. And the next step, once you've got this solid foundation, you're communicating on a regular basis, you're captivating your audience to really cultivate your community. And there's two parts to that. The first part is to really nurture your audience on Facebook. More and more, people are going to Facebook with questions, comments, feedback, both positive and negative. So you really want to be able to make sure you're maximizing Facebook as a customer service platform. And that means acknowledging positive feedback and addressing negative feedback. And I know that as business owners and marketers, it's really scary to have negative information anywhere out there about your brand. The fact is, is these conversations are probably happening all the time offline. And when
the fans bring them online to your Facebook page. That gives you a really powerful opportunity to respond and resolve the situation. Fans who have a negative experience but have that resolved are often actually more likely to keep buying from your business and sharing information about your business with their friends. And a few examples, these are recent posts from fans on the Real Kids Shade Facebook page. And the first is Walter who shared an image of her child in Real Kids Shade and a link back to her blog where she had a Real Kids Shade review and a product giveaway. And Real Kids Shade said, thanks for sharing. And we're adding it to our Pinterest board. So they're not only acknowledging this post, this fan, this blogger, they're also supporting her by sharing content about this on another social network. The second example, not quite so positive, but it was resolved in a very positive way. This fan was looking for a pair of glasses in a retail store near her. The store located a link wasn't working. So she let Real Kids Shade know through Facebook. They checked it out, resolved it, responded, and said it should be up and running now, and it was. And the fan said, thank you. She probably went to the store locator and went to get herself a pair of sunglasses for her kids. And this has two benefits. One, you are resolving the fan's challenge. So they're more likely to become brand advocates and customers long term of your company. And two is anyone can go to Facebook and see this conversation. They can see that Real Kids Change responded and resolved it. And that really builds trust with other people who are potential customers or existing customers. And again, the more you can build that trust, the more likely people are to become customers down the line. So once you're really actively nurturing your community on Facebook, the second step is to expand your circle of influence by influencing the influencers. And because social media now gives every single person kind of a loudspeaker, we can broadcast any experience with a click of a button. More and more people are becoming influencers online, on their blog, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. So you really want to identify people who may be interested in your products or services and find ways to connect them and engage them. And this picture is an example from a real kid shape customer who shared this Instagram picture of her daughter in Real Kid Shade and posted this on Twitter. So for Real Kid Shade, there are a lot of bloggers with children in that zero to twelve age range who really love that Real Kid Shade is so affordable and durable and really quality eye care for their children. So they actively share reviews, product giveaways, blog posts, feedback. And that's a really great way to keep spreading the word about Real Kid Shade to their audiences. So a few other ideas of this. Maybe if you're a restaurant or a specialty food shop or a wine shop, maybe there are food bloggers in your area who would be interested in covering your product. If you are a retail store in fashion or home decor, there are so many bloggers and online citizen journalists to cover lifestyle and decor. So consider identifying them and communicating with them to see if there's a way to get them more involved with your business. And to stop starters, how can you get people engaged and activated? Consider exclusive events for them or product giveaways and reviews like Real Kids Shave does. Another idea, depending on your budget or who you're looking to reach, is sponsored blog posts. So the big action items for you here when it comes to cultivating your community. One, check your Facebook page at least once a day. Take 10 to 15 minutes and respond to questions and comments so that you know your, your fans are really being actively cared for. And this applies to other networks as well. If you're on Twitter, check that too during the same time frame and respond to feedback. And then if you're ready to go to the next level, Identify about five to ten influencers who may be using your product or service. And start posting wishes just through email or Twitter. So maybe if you're following them on Twitter and you tweet them when they've got a great blog post that you read and love. Or maybe you see something on their blog that you think might be interesting for your fans, so you share it and email them and say, Hey, I like 
bunch of blog posts and I started with my Facebook fans, thanks for the content. And you just want to be able to start building that relationship with them. And start small when it comes to working with bloggers and influencers. And then grow your circle of friends from there. And the next step is really to encourage your audience to take action. It's really easy to get caught up in the number of Facebook fans, but at the end of the day, marketing is really about the bottom line, right? It's really about converting your fans to customers. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One is to, as the godfather might say, make them an offer they can't refuse. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. Perks, discount, special events, or information. Here's an example of a Facebook post we did for this webinar today. So, so the webinar is coming up, and it's free information, so that's an offer for our fans. Perks are another great way to get your fans more involved. Uh, for example, if you're a cupcake store, maybe you share a secret password on Facebook, and any fan who comes with your store and sets the password can get a free cupcake. You know, find ways to really use Facebook to surprise and delight your audience and get them to visit you either offline or online. This counts to another great way to get your Facebook fans more involved and encourage them to buy something. Information is also really great, especially for service businesses. So maybe you offer a free white paper and ask fans to register for the white paper. Now that way you're getting their information but also providing them value. And then again, encourage action. You really want to consider using social promotions to inspire action from your fans. And a few key benefits of social promotions, you can increase your brand awareness, grow your audience, encourage feedback to fans, and also generate more leads. Here's an example of a Facebook coupon that we shared exclusively on Facebook for our Real Kids Shade Fair. We shared a 20% off discount we created both a Facebook offer and a graphic to share this, and we're definitely able to drive some sales through this online offer. So it's a great way to get those people who are fans to really convert to customers. And there are a lot of different types of social promotions. There are sweepstakes, so straight giveaways. If you are a band or you're planning an event, maybe you'll do a ticket giveaway. A lot of our community properties do iPad giveaways or iPad mini giveaways because that's a pretty widely accepted and fun prize. So, mistakes involve a giveaway. Coupons are a discount on a product. It's a great way to get your fans to come and buy something, check you out. Photos and video and essay contests are also really great if you've already got a really engaged audience online. So, you're encouraging fans to create a photo, take an essay, and post it for the chance to win a prize. And then quiz and trivia is where it really, really kind of get your fans engaged. And there are kind of three main goals of social promotion. The first is to attract new fans, and sweet are a really great way to do that. The second goal is to engage, and photos and essay contests are a good way to engage fans as are quizzes and trivia because they're asking people to do something to get more involved with their brand. And coupons are great ways to convert fans to customers. So think about ways to use different types of campaigns to achieve different goals, depending on what you're trying to do for your business, for your bottom line. And here's an example of a Facebook campaign we're currently running for Real Kids Shade. And this is a great giveaway. So we've got three prize packages that involve Visa gift cards as well as Real Kids Shades. So it's both a combination of a special prize and the product. So this is really just in time because it's screening now and summer is right around the corner. So it's a good way to use that seasonality to get people interested in Real Kids Shades. Another benefit of campaigns is that you can capture fan email addresses so you can continue reaching out to them after these campaigns to keep them Again, more engaged with your business and more informed. 
And Facebook posting guidelines, if you ever want to run a giveaway or a sweepstakes or a photo contest on Facebook, there are a few major things to consider. The first is that, according to Facebook's rules, you have to use a third-party application to host the sweepstakes. You can't have a status update that says, like this update or comment, and the third comment will be the winner. That's completely against Facebook's rules, and you really want to play by the rules to avoid the risk of your Facebook page getting shut down. So again, always use a third-party app to host your specific information. The second big key is to keep it legal. Facebook has a lot of rules about how to run a contest with promotion on their platform, and so does the U.S. government. So, uh, the government has a lot of rules about what you can and can't do to run a sweet space. And so do a lot of local states. So you really want to be aware both of the rules of Facebook and the rules of the government and make sure that everything about your sweet space is in line with both. And then a few major things not to do. Do not associate your promotion with Facebook. They don't want people to think that they are officially sponsoring or endorsing it. So in the language you use in the graphics, you can't have indicated that Facebook is sponsoring or overly associated in any way. Again, do not use those Facebook features or functionalities. So don't ask fans to like, share, comment on status update for a chance to win. That's a no-no. The third is do not notify winners through Facebook exclusively. Of course, you can also, you can always, after a campaign, share an update. Congratulations to our winners and the winner names, or first name, last initial, to keep their privacy private. But you have to email them or call them or contact them off of Facebook to inform them they've won. And there are other rules Facebook has, and they're always updating the rules. So as part of our campaign service, we help our clients stay in line with the rules to keep them on track. But those are a few major takeaways of do and don't for Facebook promotions. And if you're thinking about doing a giveaway campaign or a photo campaign or any kind of Facebook campaign, there's a couple of action steps you really want to keep in mind when you're planning and preparing to launch. The first is give yourself a realistic timeline before the campaign launches to get everything set up. From your graphics to how you're going to promote it, you want to get that in motion and in place before you launch. So it'll be smoother sailing after you press go. You also want to give your campaign enough time to gain traction without giving people too much time to lose their attention. So we recommend that sweet spot of about six weeks to eight weeks. You want to craft a really clear and precise copy to let people know exactly how to enter and what they can expect if they win. You want really strong visual elements. Again, Facebook is becoming more and more image heavy. So you really want to have a great set of images that clearly convey what your fans will get if they win. You also want a really enticing offer, prize, or benefit. Again, it's back to knowing who your customers are and what they're interested in and finding ways to align your touch or service with their interests. So, for example, for Real Kids Chase, the product giveaway was a great fit. If you are a wine shop, for example, maybe you offer a wine giveaway. If you have a great local event coming up or you're a band, maybe it's a ticket giveaway. So think about what you're offering and how you can tie that into what your audience wants to create a really great offer. It's also really important for your campaign to be easy to enter, easy to enter and then platform agnostic. And what I mean by that is that more and more people are accessing Facebook from their mobile devices, from their iPads, from their iPhones, from their laptops. And it's really important that fans can access and enter your campaign from wherever they are accessing it online. So we work with application developers that allow us to be able to have campaigns that you can enter on Facebook or you can enter on the go from your iPhone or iPad. But it's really important to give your fans that flexibility of entering. And finally, spread the word. Effective Facebook pages and Facebook campaigns do not live on an island. 
it's really important once you want to really get the word out and let people know, let your fans know, let your friends know what you're offering, what you've got going on. So you really want to promote the campaign across digital platforms and include any other social network you're on. On Twitter, you might see that a great giveaway going on. Check out our Facebook page as we're here on the link. On Pinterest, you might have a graphic with the giveaway or the offer and a link back to your Facebook page. Choose out a blog, consider creating blog content around your website and adding a banner to the website, direct people back to Facebook. You have an e-newsletter. Send an e-blast to let people know that the campaign is going on. An example of that, for Real Kids Save, we send emails to customers and also to their group of bloggers who are really passionate about Real Kids Save, say, we wanted you to be the first to know, we've got this going on. And that's the side of ways to integrate offline and online promotions. That means using word of mouth, and if you are a retail store, have signs in and around the store to showcase your Facebook page and the giveaway. That applies also to a lot of our apartment community clients. We'll create signs for them to say, let's like on Facebook and for your chance to win. So it's a great way people are already engaging with you, visiting you, to get those people who are traffic offline, get them over online, keep engaging with you there. And then follow up. You don't want to run a great campaign and let your Facebook page go dead as soon as you're done. So you want to keep that consistent communication rather and going throughout the whole process and even after it ends. And then, once the campaign is over, try to include an opt-in in the entry form so that fans can opt in to your newsletter. And if they do, continue emailing them through email. And keep reaching out to them to let them know what else you have going on and encourage them to buy something from you down the line. And the big key to this follow-up is really it's that way again to build likability and increase your trust factor to really help convert those fans into customers. And once again, consistency is key. So a few takeaways if you're considering doing a campaign. One is make sure your campaign really abides by the rules and the guidelines of both Facebook and Uncle Sam. Align your offer with your audience. Use a variety of tactics and platforms to get the word out, both online and offline. And stay in touch with your audience, both before, during, and after the campaign, and really keep building that momentum. And if you're interested in running a Facebook campaign for your business, we do have a campaign Sherpa service. And I, as a campaign manager, will work with our clients help them develop, launch, and manage campaigns from beginning to end. And we also create pretty thorough recaps to show the results. And here are your action items to motivate your audience. The first is to create an exclusive offer for your Facebook fans. A few ideas here to get you brainstorming. Coupons are a great way to offer something special. And you can either use an image like we did in the Go Kids Save example, or Facebook offers is kind of one of their newer advertising models. That's a good way to get the word out of that special promotion. And the Facebook offers are a paid ad service from Facebook. Another idea is a Facebook flash sale. So maybe it's a one day only event and you're only letting fans know about it on Facebook. Special events and treats are also great. So maybe it's a special only for your Facebook fans. Or maybe it's the Facebook fans can again get a password or a secret code to come into your store for a special treat. And white papers are also a great giveaway for your fans, especially for service businesses. You give them information, they're also collecting their information. And if you're considering launching a social campaign and you need some help, feel free to reach out to our team and we'll tell you more about the campaign sure, but So what's next? After the webinar, every attendee will get a recording of the presentation as well as free white paper. It's a great list of 50 Facebook tips and ideas to help you engage your fans and captivate them. And you can also sign up for a free 
content strategy consultation with our team, and here's the link for that to check out. So I'm going to hop over into the comments section and take a look at your questions. If you've got any more questions, please keep them coming. I have a question from Mikhail. Will you be explaining how exactly to create custom tabs? Um, that's a great question. There's a couple ways to do that, right? Of course, you could completely code and host a custom tab from scratch. Or there's a lot of services out there that make it really easy for you to develop your own custom tabs. The service we use is called Wildfire by Google. And we work with our clients to design and develop custom tabs within Wildfire. So there's definitely a lot of services out there. You definitely want to explore online to find out what what functionality you need and which of those are going to be the best for you in terms of the price point. A lot of them have a monthly fee, and it can range anywhere from you know twenty dollars a month to a couple hundred dollars a month. And of course, there's different options at each level. And Leslie had that same question as well, so I hope that helped to answer that question. Another great question from Abby. If you're having writer's block one day and you just cannot come up with something good, is it best to post something mediocre or not to post at all for one day? And that's a slippery slope. <laughs> So you can always post something mediocre every now and then, but then if you find yourself doing it a lot, you kind of want to steer clear of it. And you know, writer's block happens to all of us, happens to the best of us. One key trick for that is, if you ever have a day where you're feeling really inspired, try to knock out a couple of Facebook posts keep in your back pocket for those days when you do have writer's block. So again, that's where planning in advance can really help you. Are there any legal issues we should be aware of when sharing other people's content? That's from Justin, and it's a great question. Of course, the major, well, first a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> but the major issue is you never want to pass off anyone else's content as your content. So when you're sharing someone else's content, you know, link back to their site and try to get them a status so people know that this is where you're getting that content. Marvin, great info. Thank you so much, Marvin. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Will there be a slide or recording available of the webinar? And you are in luck, my friend. So we are going to be sharing recordings of the webinar, and we'll also have slides available soon after the webinar. Uh, thanks. James, same question. We will have a presentation available on the Digital Sherpa website as well. Is there any evidence, great question from John, is there any evidence that people visit the company page after a like? Okay, this is a great question, John, because here's the fact. A lot of times, people visit a company page, they like it, and they may really never go back to your page. I'm sure that you said that you yourself don't visit pages, you only consume content in the feed. And the majority of Facebook users are doing exactly that. Facebook users spend about 40% of their time in the news feed. They don't, they don't necessarily go back to your Facebook page on a regular basis after they've liked you. So that's why it's really important to create really great content that really gets people captivated and engaged. Because the more you can create content that breaks through the clutter, the more likely people will see that content in their news feed. Facebook uses an algorithm, a very fancy algorithm called EdgeRank, to determine who sees your content, whether it shows up in the news feed, and how high it shows up in the news feed. And because you just spend most of their time there, you really want to show up there in order to get seen at all. And there's a few things that you to determine EdgeRank. One is recency, so the more often you post, the more recent your content is, the more likely you are to show up in the news feed. Another is engagement, 
So the more people like, share, comment, A, those people who were liking and sharing will see your updates more often, and that will also spread to their, to their friends as well, potentially. So engagement really is key to showing up in the news feed because that's where most people are really going to interact with your, with your content. And it's also important to note that now, because there's a lot of noise on Facebook, brand updates are only reaching less than about 20% of their fans. So it's really important to have that great content to try to get your message as far as you can organically. John, good follow-up? Okay. I don't think that necessarily mean that waste, the work that goes to cover photos or apps and milestones, I think those all really help you to create a great first impression so that fans do like your business and sign up for more content, you know. So a really strong Facebook page is really kind of your handshake and your welcome mat, and you really want to get people in the door. It's the first step to building a long relationship and then converting again those fans to customers. All right, well, I'll tell you what, that is all the time I've got for questions. Thank you all so much for tuning in and staying with me and asking such fantastic questions. If you've got more questions, please feel free to tweet them with the hashtag FB5. You can also tweet me or Digital Sherpa directly. I'm at HelloLT, and Digital Sherpa is at Digital Sherpa. So I really appreciate your comments, feedback, questions, and let's stay in touch. Again, if you're interested in a free content strategy consultation, pick out the link and keep an eye out on your email inbox for a recording of the presentation and our white paper on Facebook tips and ideas. All right, thank you all so much.